Hello, children. We are back in the Wizarding World, and we are talking about um, the movie I was looking least forward to revisiting, but at the same time looking forward to revisiting for reasons. I was looking forward to revisiting this movie because I saw it once when I was a kid, maybe twice, who knows, and I wasn't really big on it, but then again, I was like seven when this movie came out. Um, I, I was looking forward to it because I wanted to see if I would appreciate it more now that I'm older and I have a high tolerance for certain movies. So, let me tell you guys a story about this movie real quick before I go into my opinion. So, I saw this movie in IMAX. Actually, I saw this movie twice. I saw it in IMAX and I saw it with my mom. So, I saw it in IMAX. And the 3D was fucked up, and there was, I saw this movie in IMAX 3D, and the 3D was only on for five minutes of the movie. I was not a very happy child. So, I've got a bit of a personal grudge with this movie, but, with that said, um, Half-Blood Prince came out in 2009, nine? Yeah, nine. Um, directed by David Yates again. This movie was kind of not like Order of the Phoenix or God Put a Fire and, because there's not really much action at all. There's maybe two big action sequences. Very good action sequences at that. But there is really no action. This is more of a. This is more of Voldemort's movie. That's basically what this is. Voldemort is not in this movie at all. Technically speaking, he's not in this movie at all. But it is his movie. We get to learn a lot about his backstory. Um, also, Snape. You know. So, what did I think of Harry Potter and the Half Blood of Prince? Well, I ate some fucking words today. I thought this movie was very good. I was not expecting much, but coming out, this movie's very, very, very good, I think. You know, this, this has climbed up my ranking drastically, and I'm glad I can appreciate this movie now, um, more than before I did. Kevin, what did you think of Half-Blood Prince? Uh... I mean, it's a very, it's a very good film. It's still, it's still down there. I think it's just ever so slightly worse than the others. For me, so far. But yeah, that's just how it is so far. Okay. That's true. I think, I, I might get some shit for this, but I think it's better than Prisoner of Azkaban. Sue me. I think it's better than Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, I don't think this movie is forgettable by Prisoner of Azkaban. I think Half-Blood Prince brought a lot. So I'm going to keep this brief just like Order of the Phoenix because there's not really much to say with this movie. Um, so acting, you know the drill. It's really good. Um, we only got one new character to my knowledge. And he was good. The, the Witch Potions teacher. Very good. For a movie that has little action, the pacing works very, really well. Um, I say the first hour is very fast-paced and very good. The second hour slows down a little bit, and the last 30 minutes is always moving, so it's solid. It's never boring to me. That's that's my thing. I always thought this movie was fucking boring. This movie's not boring. If you, you're, I feel like you have to be an old enough age to appreciate this movie. Like, I feel like little kids are just not going to fucking watch this movie because to a little kid, nothing happens in this movie. It's just a bunch of walking around and talking. But, I don't know. The story is really good in this movie with Dumbledore and we're getting backstory with Voldemort. Also, the stuff with Draco and Snape. Awesome. Speaking of Dumbledore, Dumbledore is a fucking beast in this movie. He, you can, you can tell, he knows some shit is about to happen. And Dumbledore is awesome in this movie. And his big 
you know, epic moment at, at the end of the third act. Awesome. Awesome. Good shit. That, that got me hyped when he did the whole thing with the fire. Fucking awesome. Unfortunately, that momentum is killed because bitch ass Snape fucking kills him. In a great twist. Um, sad. I love the moment where they all do the salute, I guess. So that was nice. Um, the ending is awesome. The third act is very good. Um, again, the twist with Snape is really good. The fact that he's the half blood prince. Um, I like um, them taking over the school. When they take when Bellatrix takes over the school and shit, and I like the final five minutes when they tease Heavy Heart. Um, they tease it really heavily that the Deathly Hollows is gonna happen. And you know I'm watching this movie and knowing that our next review is Deathly Hollows Part One. <sighs> I can't wait. It's gonna be great. Now I only have one mixed aspect. Um, Draco. Now. I remembered him having an important part. Ugh. I remembered him having an important part in this movie. I forgot what it was. Now, I like that they gave him the part that they did. With him being the one that's supposed to kill Dumbledore for Voldemort. Voldemort hand chose him. Now, I love the fact that that's the case. However, I feel like they did absolutely nothing with it. I feel like they did nothing with it. What does Draco do in this movie? He puts a curse on a girl, and he goes into a closet three times. That's what he does in this movie. To me, he did nothing. His big moment was when he didn't kill Dumbledore. And I get it. That was the setup for Deathly Hallows Part 1, because I know Voldemort's going to give him shit. But... Still, you couldn't, like, have him do something. They just have him mope around and shit. And he's made even look... He's made to look even weaker when Harry fucks him up. I don't know. I was disappointed by that. I was actually looking forward to having Draco do something important for once. Like, other than him just being a little prick. Because he was barely in order of the Phoenix. I don't even remember him being in... Oh, yeah, he was in Order of the Phoenix. Barely. He was in it for, like, two minutes. Did nothing. I don't know. That was the only thing that bugged me. You have anything else to add to this, Kevin? Um... I don't know. There's not much else to tell. Like I said, I mean, this was only slightly worse because... Even, like, I think everything you said was true, I just don't have that same feeling as I did towards the other movies. So, while it is still, for me, the worst, it's, I'm not saying the worst as if it's bad. It's a good film, it's just ever so slightly worse than the others. There are no bad well. Harry Potter movies. Yes. <laughs> and if we're considering Fantastic Beasts, Crimes of Grindelwald will be the worst Harry Potter movie, by far. Every other Harry Potter movie except Crimes of Grindelwald is either very good or fucking awesome. Crimes of Grindelwald, uh, no. We already told you guys, we're not reviewing that movie. Why? Well, one, it's technically not even Harry Potter. It's trying to be. It's fucking failing miserably. But for that reason, but number two, I refuse to rewatch Crimes of Grindelwald again. So, there you go. And it's not like... Yeah, is it really a big deal if we don't do it? No. Considering what we have planned for July and August, you're gonna not hate us for it. But, with that said, that is Half-Blood Prince. Very good movie for me. Um, not the worst to me at all. I think it's better than Prisoner of Azkaban, so I think Prisoner of Azkaban is the worst for me, which, again, don't shoot me, please. That's just how I feel. Leave me alone. Um... On Saturday, Saturday, we will be reviewing Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. We're almost there, fellas and ladies. We're almost there. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys are enjoying the Harry Potter reviews. Be on the lookout for Deathly Hallows Part 1 very soon. And stay safe in quarantine. See ya.